recording. That's that's I'm recording with OBS Studio, Open Broadcaster, so we can capture it for the other people. Yeah. So, as far as the overall program, we're like it, it definitely challenges on the build and stuff like that. So we're one like at this point we're pretty much like one day behind. So what I would suggest is we proceed with the normal program, assuming that we're one day behind, but maybe like. Uh, let's not cut away any of the days of the first four days since they're the generative uh, general training <coughs> But we can maybe like trim. I mean we kind of have to trim one day off the five project days So that means we'll do the Raspberry Pi and try to see what we can do in four days instead of five I think that's the best compromise at present for the timing that we have and we still have a lot You know we got a lot to cover things like that. Does that sound good with everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah um, I'm not wondering where the other guys are, but I guess I can email Is them right after. Yeah. Could we maybe talk through the list of things that we could trim in those project days, and yeah. then have each group trim something different, yeah. so that the entire group ends up fulfilling the whole thing, so that at least there's like yeah. you know yeah. documented experience of all the intended things, and then. You know, we can go back and do what they did, and, and vice versa. Oh, that's good. Good idea. So, that would, we should probably coordinate it since they're not on right now. But I do know that Chris has been doing the. Well, yesterday he mentioned about the CNC drill. So if mm -hmm. he, he gets a design, we can print it. You know, have that documented. For us, I would suggest we go forward with the um, plotter, because in that exercise we have the ability to generate. G code, like we, we should try it both manually and using exporting it from different software. Um, but that's then we can actually print, possibly modify, to get into the slicing, understanding how slicing works, different settings, um, kind of like the software settings, and probably go over from the back, uh, starting with how do you upload the firmware to the system, and then go from there. So yeah, we could definitely do that today. Uh, we could probably get it all in. If Chris has any work done on a CNC plotter, then maybe uh, we'll leave it. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to pretty much get that done in today. Um, <coughs> so we'll collaborate as much as we can so that both of those things are done. So if we could follow up with Chris afterwards, we can say, hey, focus on a, on a CNC drill. Like you guys said, they probably have some stuff uh, on that already. Uh, since they appear to be pretty good over there. And I don't know what's happening with, uh, I mean, they were still working in Belgium, they were still working on the printers and all that, so I don't know where they are. They're a little more behind. So, and then we have, so f then for tomorrow we would do the electronics, like do the DIY Arduino, and we can pull that off. We've got the parts for that, so learn about microcontrollers, uh, some of the electronic, how do you, build electronic circuits using basic tool chains we can go through basic lessons there um, so that way yeah that's the third day and the day after that <coughs> is work on the batteries and the power electronics Tom's got a lot of the power electronics uh, so we can do that um, yeah yeah so so that's pretty good um, let's see what can we do right now I wanted to uh, get well for for those those of us who are here um, put up a page, the short link is J, if you go to the wiki, um, just go, I put a shortcut, that's just letter J, and it get, takes you to the January 2020 Open Source Microfactory Steam Camp page, so here, that's why I talked about everybody's log, I'm looking at logs, like the official, okay, name, space, log, I'm seeing a bunch of people have it, but actually less than half of the people have it, mm -hmm. um, because we want to have a convention uh, so that everybody can find each other's work, so, so maybe if everybody could... Uh, do that. I'm not, let's, like for example, Jeremy, I know you've got a log, but maybe name it or redirect it from Jeremy log, which is in red, meaning that there's nothing there right now. The, the blue stuff is where people have set up their logs. Um, like for example, Chris log from yesterday, I know he, for example, put up the... Because, um, uh, yeah, for example, he put up the, the bearing, which Jonathan already upload uh, downloaded and then modified we actually didn't put it back online because it's the same one we just scaled it up but that's worth documenting like for example Jonathan um, Jonathan is here um, going over how we document but for example if you did the like like Chris did the, the bearing yes. after you did yours you can report on your results like for example um, 
I put that as a result, like Monday, January 27th, uh, we can probably communicate well by saying, okay, what are the assets generated by each group so that everybody knows? Like, for example, I put uh, the videos, okay, I mean, got the videos on YouTube. Um, we generated this in Texas, for example, so people can take a look at that. Um, as far as the this, which looks pretty impressive. Uh, so we can share the, uh, you know, through simple links on, on, on the log where I think it's useful to do a log where. Uh, J Jeremy, are you looking at the same page? Shortcut J. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So therefore, this looks like a log with with dated entries, and we can coordinate what we're doing. Um, I would also propose that we we stick to to the schedule. We're kind of we're just nine to fivers. So, but but here, we'll, let's go from <laughs> nine to <laughs> nine to one, maybe. <laughs> And then two to six, so four hours in the morning, four hours in af afternoon, uh, so that we also get out out of school at six p.m. So we could do other things, catch up with laundry and things like that, uh, and prepare for tomorrow. I, I should prepare some material for tomorrow and stuff like that. So uh, let's try to stick to back to the schedule. And the first day was kind of crazy because we were working out a lot of issues, and it's kind of understandable the first day. But let's try to stabilize so that we can. Uh, be fresh because I mean after if you go so long it's, it becomes counterproductive you're tired and yeah. you know like actually you know thinking about the <laughs> the first 3d prints it's like it's not thinking clearly that we couldn't solve that like bam okay as we solved the issues yesterday so yesterday we solved all the issues we've got perfect prints on our side here uh, where are you where are you at Jeremy did you get your printer printing yeah yeah I did here I'll send you, I'll share a few photos um, nice if I can Remember yeah, so uh, yeah, like after the meeting, maybe like put it into the ma well. Of course, you're like I would be I'm expecting to see that at Jeremy Log. I click on J Jeremy Log, and it's already there. But let's see. If I okay. Can, I can find recently. Can you guys see the screen share here? We don't have video uh, on this machine right now. Oh. So here, Jeremy. Okay. He's expecting you to upload it to the page. I can do that. I'll, or put a link, close like wherever that is. Then. Um, yep. So J, user Jeremy D. I'm not seeing exactly where. So you see, the, there's a version history. It's a very useful thing. Um, version history, the recent changes, rather. So on the left tab on the wiki, you've got this recent wiki changes. And that's a great way to coordinate yourself with whatever's, whatever's happening. It's all going to be in a history by itemized. So that's a useful feature of the wiki to get coordinated around. So can we you got. Can you go back to that tab back there? I this one? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, for example, I created that page, and that page yeah. directs to this new page, which is just created. Uh, the bold means that it's just been created, whereas if you see not bold, that means it's a page that already existed, and then I was kind of curious adding to it. Each of those updates also has a sort of unique identifier, like a commit would. So that this would almost be like a commit history, and if you um, wanted to reference a specific change, that you can search for that sort of you know, commit hash type experience. Commit history. I think this log here, I don't know how far it goes back, but what you have under each one is, a, like, for example, GROCUS log, there's a commit history. So you do have... Yeah. You do but I guess have if you want to tell someone, like, a very specific um, update snippet, it's a diff from the... No. Yeah. Um, well, right. actually, actually, you do have, like, for example, let's take a look at also, this okay. entry. How does it treat it? Diff. Yeah, yeah. It does. It'll show you the differences, actually. So what he changed and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, uh, and you're driving at the ability to find a highly specific change in the shortest amount of like manual search possible. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like if I, after I update that change, if I you know know or can easily find whatever that uh, change snippet was, and I want to direct someone to not just the entire log, because maybe as it grows, it gets harder to you know find whatever it is that I was yeah. trying to direct someone to. But if I know that that diff change has a specific commit hash that I can search for, then it will yeah. sort of jump to that part of the page. Um, yeah, the best we could do is is uh, the dating, like the the log with the newest entry understand. on top. Like, yeah, like for example, if we're we want to refer to this, say, you know, we remember we had this conversation. We were talking about, uh, you know, the three D printed bearing. You can go to the, you know, like the Steam Camp log. It's mm -hmm. like kind of by date you can find it. If you search for <coughs> this string, but include like this timestamp, even yeah. if this, even if it's just the sort of nineteen hundred sixteen, would it you find? You can. That? There's a. I, I think it will like what we have let's see if it does if it finds the actual um, or even just history yeah. something like that I know this search box here is not optimized yeah. really uh, there are plugins no I, I mean it doesn't what really if you see just that um, include the actual like time and ditch the rest of the word so like ditch revision as of and even the date so do so it only to have the day of the time of the day. So like this, let's say. Or yeah. Not I'm not sure. Uh, okay, but there are sure. there are better search functionalities or plugins that mm -hmm. can be added to Media Wiki. So if that doesn't exist, I mean that would be coding. But right. But of course, Wiki okay. Media Wiki is extensible for that kind of stuff. And I know we have this search box that actually this is really crappy. There's there's other search plugins mm -hmm. for the for the mm -hmm. wiki, and we should update that. We don't really have a good wiki media wiki person on our team right now who knows how to is do that, that search well. Box just the default of this media yeah. wiki sort of that library, one is the right? default of the media wiki install. We didn't okay. change that. Right. So uh, I mean, if anybody knows media uh, wiki hmm. programmers, well, it's extensible even um, in let us know. Existing ability, we're just not leveraging it. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, the wiki is a pretty big beast here. We there's probably things we don't know about. So so a good person on media wiki, I think, would really help the team to do things like mm -hmm. templates. Like for Absolutely. example, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I, I downloaded that one template, and I, I can, it makes sense on how you fill it in more easily. So right now, I think you, they can not just call out, for example, it would just be a list of kind of just minutes. To, I see why it's useful. It wouldn't necessarily, you have to not worry about how organized it is, maybe. Initially, right. you're just putting it up there on the yeah. log. Is that the goal there? I mean, yeah, like, you know, like here we have the data. Like, we can upgrade it to really nice format. Like, for example, yeah. if we put a... A template on top of this we actually did that before it's there's a page on a wiki called flashy XM and this is it this is it this is actually feeding all this content and it's kind of like it's outdated but here's like the latest video which is actually our high temperature uh, uh, heat heat tightening right there so it's actually feeding the correct videos here you can have all kinds of different windows this is a template on top of it. this is all formatted mm -hmm. HTML CSS on top of the so this kind of stuff would be really useful to help coordinate like this could be our team we should definitely have this for okay this is the yeah. January yeah. steam camp where we've got product lo you know whatever product log and map of people participating there's a scrum board which is scrummy.com right here the task board which is cool. live editable like you don't need to log in and then you can put a story in here right now so that? do it yeah, we use it. Like uh, there's people to use it. If people understand, that's part of our infrastructure. Super lightweight Scrum board. So I just added do it, and it's live editable. Any you don't need permissions to sign in. It's very very useful. Like forget about like uh, Slack or this or that. Like things that get started always get disused. Here we just embed it, and it's yeah. on the wiki. Um, and then like embedded spreadsheets where you can tr keep track of whatever you've done and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's. You can do it like to to get this infrastructure proper. Yes, there's a bunch of background work to get the form formats, templates, um, the whole video setup with good internet. Um, hopefully, where the Raspberry Pis uh, come into that, and so forth. But right now, we're you know the first thing is to get the info up there. Then we can start organizing it. 
and so forth. But Jeremy, uh, what do you got for us? As far as oh, you said you're going to share a picture. Yeah, can you guys see my video if I stick the picture on the screen share? Let's see. Or do you want me to post it? Yeah, let's see. Somewhere? Let's see if we do that. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, uh -huh, look at that. So, so I was one. Sh I was one uh, short. So that was one of the first things we printed. Oh, this wow. was like the tenth. The, the tenth try, but. <laughs> <laughs> How did you print it without an end stop? How did you manage that? Um, oh, you just had it. We attached it with a couple pieces of wire from a Cat5 bundle uh, and um, a zip cool. tie, and, and just got it to you know use it as an end stop. I think I have a picture of it. Okay. Um, yeah. Look. Well, you can see up, right there. I think. Yeah. Uh huh. In the I center. See. That's where we attached it. There. Very cool. Those ones are first ones were pretty bad, and then I just oh, there's the picture of it now. Ah. Um. Very nice. Let's see what else. Yeah, and we got our prints pretty nice. If you look at the Facebook um, on the J page, look at our little uh, one-inch linear bearing. Yeah, we're printing pretty nice right now. Um, okay. So hopefully if you just Let's follow see. the... I mean, what are the things to follow? You've got the nozzle size. You've got the... Oh, look at that. It's something like we printed. Yeah. Tweezers? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, oh, look at that. it's supposed to be a clip, but the end broke off. Okay. Um, and then I did print the, um, I printed this little push fitting. It's like a big spacer for the end of my, yeah. the end of that rod. And it printed out pretty well. Yeah. And using 1.2 nozzle with 0.4 layer height. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. And then, um, you think, you think you got your print quality, like, pretty, pretty tuned in, or... Is it you still got to um, work something? It's it's pretty good. I had a couple of fan things going on um, earlier, like when I was printing those end stops, and that was giving me you know inconsistent uh, heat transfer there as it came out of the nozzle. Oh, your fan was disconnected and those or something? Yeah, it was it wasn't quite. I had it wired to the wrong spot, so. Ah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that the, has to the be the only you're gonna get stuck in. That, that cools the extruder. Yeah. Or the extruded plastic. So that has been taken care of. Mm-hmm. Um, I the quality was pretty good. The last thing I printed was this tweezers, and I should have taken a shot from the other angle, um, from the other direct uh, axis. But yeah. it printed pretty well. Yeah. Um, I think I could make. I think I could make. You know. I debated printing that one piece that I need for the L bracket, but I thought I'd wait till we printed a few more things before I tried something large. Yeah, and you tried to do a live joint on that one with uh, like a pin and a... Um, no, I haven't really... I have a, I can get a small little like C-clamp in there if I need to really square it up, but it prints just fine even though the X-axis is kind of rotated a few degrees. Okay. Um... It still it still moves square to both the z-axis and the y-axis, so the nozzle's not dragging anything. So I think it'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris, if you join, take a look at that page on the typed in there. So that's our organizing page. Let's see. Oh wait, are you? Chris he and Ford, are you guys on? What? They're all on? They were here for a second. Okay. Um, yeah, they're just dis disappeared again. Um, Chris is back. I want to see what Chris is up to, because Chris, if you've got a... Uh... Chris, you, you back there? We can't hear you if you are. But we were looking uh, yeah. for. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Ah, oh, there. Awesome. Um, hey. Hey, how'd you do yesterday? We got nice prints. Uh, we've got everybody running. Uh, so we're kind of one day behind, but we're we're moving right forward on today's. Um, basically, trying to do the plotter and decode generation. And if you've got any CNC drill, ah, nice. how, how'd you do that? Did you uh, get anywhere? Uh, no, we we haven't done we. I haven't done seen uh, C drill yet, but no, we're we've made um, a lot of good progress on the D three D. 
we have pretty much everything uh, figured out and assembled. We ran some issues as we went. Um, we did, tried to do a little bit of free cut and some wiki and other things. Um, we did a, a, uh, some promo shots and stuff with uh, Devin. When Devin and Kevin came by, I had a good time with them. Um, but the... Um, hmm, cool. Yeah, we ran into, into an issue with um, a motors not working. Uh, we think we tracked it down to the stepper drivers not having their heat sinks. Uh, and so I'm not sure if they were burned out or just overheating. But otherwise, we got extrusion. We got everything mechanically looks good. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're ready to, to, to start printing. Um, but, yeah, so today, but most of today's blocked off for, for FreeCAD. Uh, Sean's not here uh, yet. He had to... Um, uh, run some errands. Uh, his brother came into town from Shanghai, um, and he had to take him back to the airport uh, uh, this morning. So he's going to be coming in a, a little bit later in the afternoon. Interesting. Are you saying that we had Shang come in all the way from from China for this workshop? Uh, his brother did. His brother did. He came. He, he, he was from. Uh, he he drove in from New York City. Uh, um, yeah. But, uh, Let's hope he's not coughing. Yeah. But his brother had had to had to head on out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds good. So. Uh, yeah, take a look at the January 2020 Open Source Microfactory Steam Camp Coordinating page. The link I pasted in. So um, yeah, this is great. Yeah, keep uh, updating what you get there. Uh, for you, it'll be relevant to do the uh, electronics. All the electronics videos are online now, and then the procedure that Jer Jeremy described in the email. Jeremy, if you wouldn't mind putting that on your live. Yeah, which looks, looks perfect. Um, that gets you to the first print yeah. using the baby stepping correction. But we've done that, Chris, right? You've you you've seen how we do that. Yeah. Yeah, you've, you've yeah, done yeah. that plenty of times, so you know how to do that. Um, yeah. 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 I'm wondering how the the guys in in Belgium are doing. They're I think they're kind of behind a little bit, but. I think we can, we were saying here like we're one day behind but we we want to pretty much like take off one day from the project days, that's probably going to be the reality and, and do four four of those days instead of five, but we should get a lot done, like we should have definitely a working yeah, um, Raspberry Pi, we can do the bent 4D printed kind of uh, panel pieces, that would be really cool. We want to set up um, maybe like um, right now. Uh, or by tomorrow, let's do. Um, well, let's let's just talk about it real quick. So, so part library, just the concept of the part library. So, when when we're actually getting to the, like right now, we're doing like little projects and here and there. I see Chris, for example, you put up a library part on your log with the with the eight millimeter linear bearing. Uh, by the way, click on. Um, you see the face. We did a one inch version of that. You see the Facebook post there. No. No, let me touch it. That's good. That's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, um, so take a look at that. Uh, but for for right now, I want to be sh sure that everyone's clear about how once we get into the collaborative design, because with the with the Raspberry Pi tablet, it's going to be a chance to break it down into many pieces. Like, you know, maybe uh, a team works on. Uh, yeah, break it down. So we'll start. I think the best way to do it is do a Google Doc. We say, okay, here's the breakdown. Here's all the agents we have uh, on a team. You know, we've got like say what ten people or so, ten or twelve, or more. Uh, we break down task by task, and then we go at it. But that at that point, it becomes very important that everybody keeps track of stuff in the part library. Otherwise, it's like all over. Where do you find it? So the part library should be a link, probably prominent at the top of the open source microfactory Steam Camp page. So since that's our main project, let's you know we have a venue link. For our conference and then let's add okay so part library for uh, I'm doing it right now part library for the Raspberry Pi tablet and that will include a bunch of elements there's like uh, so well let's let's just put that right in brackets um, you know uh, just let's put it right there quick and dirty right there so we've got placeholder if you refresh the January page part library for the Raspberry Pi tablet so then we'd seed it there's a template on a wiki called part library so go to a page called part library and it's just uh, the HTML for here's a sample um, part 
No, part library is the actual part library. What we need is a part library template. So that should make sense. So here, just uh, below is a sample part library consisting of a bunch of parts. Just copy, just go to edit and copy the underlying code. So basically, um, there's the way we do them. So gallery, let's just copy that um, here. But the way it works, just to show you how it works. So basically, the formatting wiki text there is gallery per row, so six per row. Kind of deal. And then you start and put in your file. So we'll replace those files with the files we need. But we just started it. Okay, so we've got the first part. Uh, well, we have to obviously replace that, replace the JPG. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Uh, well, here you'd go into edit and replace the JPG with a different file name. So here we've got, here's the printer, but we'll replace it with a Raspberry Pi tablet, that JP, JPG, that PNG, um, and then tablet final assembly. So that would be like our uh, deal there. So yeah, you can edit that, but what, what happens there is you add individual pieces to the library, so they're nice and formatted. You got a link to the FreeCAD file. Um, you also want to have a link to the STL file because you want to have the library allow you to produce this thing right away. So you click on, for example, the STL file and under that page you can have more information. Like if we have the the FreeCAD file here, we click on it, we have a whole version history of it, well, when we will have it. Uh, you can put, you know, edit this page, so not only do you have the FreeCAD file here, but you can also treat it like a regular wiki page where you've got notes, you know, put some notes, like what's happening here, notes on defects, improvements, or whatever, so you can treat anything as a wiki page, so you can edit that. And here, the picture above, like, that's, that's called our visual history. So, as we're going about it, just keep pasting a just screenshot using, I mean, we've got here, we've got screenshot, which is the software. Just take a screenshot, a little screenshot, and uh, reduce, the fi reduce the file size so it's not too big. But I use um, GIMP to just cut and paste. Like, if you do a screenshot, like, I'm just reducing these fi little files to tiny, tiny memory, like 20K. So, you know, you say you, uh, GIMP. I don't know if people have used it. Um, but <coughs> copy and basically upload a little file and then make it like 100 pixels wide so it doesn't span the whole screen. So basically file and then 100 pixel size. Um, and then just keep pasting that so that someone who's new to the product, say we get somebody new on it, they can see, oh, well, okay, we started with just this square piece. Uh, maybe this little square thing, and then we modified it, we put the hole for the screen in it, so people can trace the history, and the more of that you give, the more people can enter the process. I mean, it's it's intensive, because it, you have to do it, but uh, it does help you get oriented. So, for example, like on D3D Universal, like as an example, this is like kind of, this is our visual history, so we see how you know, we started pieces one after another, like here you might see that like on the extruder we did maybe some changes then continued, continued, like fr from this uh, this lever we modified it to this more funky lever or something. Uh, it kind of like, you can tr more or less trace the history of the changes or at least show it shows you that work has been done and so forth. So it's, it is useful. Um, it does take overhead but we encourage that to happen so that if you have a very large team, you can, like visually, bam. Like otherwise, you've got a wall of text, mm -hmm. and then you're downloading file, open it up. I mean, it takes you forever. So this just makes it convenient Absolutely. as a and visual. You're getting the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and on the part library, like, you know, the picture matches, so you can immediately, like, within seconds, you can say, okay, I need the I need the heater block. That's what I need to work on. Bam. You, you don't even you know you don't have to read much. So you're combining text plus visual. Uh, to make it easier to find. So that's the part library. So so okay. So we're st we're gonna start our part library. So so edit that. You know, uh, everybody um, get familiar with editing that and just add you know a sample new thing there, and feel free to use this for many different things. 
Uh, it does take a little bit of o overhead because you got to format this and you know type in the right code to do it. Otherwise, you can simply put in links to files on your log, and then we can arrange it into part libraries later. But uh, follow the 60-second rule where if you have internet, get that file up as soon as you can to your log. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's part libraries, very important thing where, as I mentioned, if we break down the, the tablet or any project into very granular parts, you can get really granular, like, like maybe we decide to 3D print <coughs> screws or, or like pegs that we snap this together for a hypermodular design, you know. Okay, design that screw. Mm -hmm. Test it on a printer. So the use the same nozzle, 1.2, 0.4 layer height, or or at least record the production engineering that you have, so that the next person can replicate it exactly without any question. And here, the thing that we have working for us already is every one of us now has identical printers with identical settings, pretty much. So mm -hmm. if I give the file to you, like we Should we right here, yeah. yeah, we right here, we're able to take the same card and put it in a different printer and get the so same result. Yeah. You want to be able to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the degeneracy of the tool chain. Degeneracy meaning you're reducing that to a small set so that the results are identical as part of a large group prototyping process. Um, so that's kind of like the basic thing. And yeah, we'll explore this. We'll, you know, that'll be fun wh when we get to the Raspberry Pi tablet. For now, make sure we just can get the technical editing of that. Just practice editing the, you know, all of us here, practice editing the part library on your log or whatever uh, to make sure you know how to do that so that we're just seamlessly uh, doing that. So we're, we're not in this position where, okay, uh, Don, uh, where's the file? Like, we want to try to minimize that because I know personally it's, it's hard. You got to discipline yourself to do that. Just put things up there because I, kn I know people resist that. It's not, not how we're used to working. But basically treat the, the wiki as your disk drive. Mm -hmm. Treat it as your storage. Don't, don't even, you don't even have to save it on your desktop. Just, well, you do to upload it, but well, you can't save straight to the wiki. <coughs> but as soon as you got it on your desktop, it's like back it up. It's a backup already. Mm -hmm. So it's so it makes so sure. Like so if I'm writing line the whole OSC thing off of the USB, yeah, we have to save it to a SD card or not? Well, no, okay, is that right? uh, you, you can save it to your desktop. My memory would be on this. Yeah, okay. No, Actually, uh, I s you still uh, can in here. Yeah, on um, OSC to Linux. Them. Okay. Uh, I was we were working with that, and, and it seems like the only place you can save is to the desktop. I don't think it allows you to save to other directories, they're protected. Mm -hmm. So just save to the desktop when you're on OSC Linux, and then as soon as on you the have it on the... Right. Say it again? On the live boot version. On the live boot version, save on mm -hmm. the desktop. I think that's the only place it allows you to save things. Mm -hmm. And then just get it up to the wiki as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic uh, protocol. Make sure we don't lose files and everybody else can follow you. So, yeah. Um, Beyond that. So, um, I know there's a specific place about loading the OSC and stuff software. Actually, I know I'm going to record that process for the, the machine that I have. Initially, I'll just put it on the log, in my log, and then it can go to wherever it's supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. like log, just log it, and then we can put it wherever we need to put it more specifically. Yeah, yeah. So, log is like the first place. Like, if, you ask, if you're asking, like, hey, where do I put it? Well, start Don't with the log, it. just get yeah. it up okay. there. Um, because that's the like the, it's a two-step process getting up there then organize it uh, it's a sandbox it's supposed to be messy it's but the advantage is you can clean it up and make it as pretty as much as the energy you put into it it can be looking like a prof really professional site you can format all HTML CSS on it that's not the issue let's get the content up there so it's a database it's essentially a database of content Okay, so for today, let's do that. So if you're aware of the D3D Universal Wiki page, uh, go to, um, so for today's assignment, the D3D Universal has already the pen plotter attachment, which um, actually I did that. I built upon a, another guy, Ferdy, who started it. So on the top here, you've got, um, let's see, CAD, plotter. So under c the CAD section at the D3D Universal page, you got plotter. So the part of interest is this plotter pen attachment. So I'm going to paste that into our today's notes.
so we can now download it and if we like it we can print it I mean we can if you don't like anything about it you think you can do better or, you know you want to change something uh, we're welcome to do it the idea is that we're we're showing a, a real example of a print that you know we're modifying we're actually changing the head the tool head and the only change we need to make is basically we don't need any of the electronics outside of the sensor probe because in order to plot properly you're going to need to know where the bed is the plotter head itself has spring a spring in it you'll notice when you print it when you when you look at it it bends it's a basically a flat piece of plastic that <coughs> bends up and down so you can uh, accommodate a bit of uh, level of the bed mm. but we still want to do the bed leveling because you know you have to know where to start at up front so let me just put that uh, file today for today so on the d3d universal page uh, so I just added that to the January page uh, you can now refresh plotter pen dot fcstd uh, it will take you to the file it's on a D3D Universal page um, the only change we have to make is um, we'll, we'll take one screw off that does the printer print head so obviously we're gonna keep the print head on until we get a successful print so we know we can have the printer now function as a plotter as a matter of just exchanging the tool head because you've got on the plotter you only have two dimensions of motion you, you're not really going to be going up uh, but then we just get a piece of paper attached with magnets uh, any kind of pen will do pen sharpie whatever um, so, okay. uh, so it's actually pretty cool because um, the little bend in the plotter plotter attachment uh, so you can start playing with it downloading that uh, the way it works is a uh, like a rail vertical rail and this clip the clip actually slides on the rail so it's up and down adjustable and there's a screw one of our m6 screws that just goes into the the piece there um, bottom. Mm. so this I'm trying to open it up so it's a larger picture uh, so this piece mm. slides <laughs> on the you can adjust it up and down but basically the you've got a bolt through and then then you hold whatever writing implement you have mm. now that also means that you can put a vinyl cutter in there how about that you can get one of those little attachments. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a little knife with a tiny, tiny blade at the bottom that swivels. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting stuff like, you know, you can cut out a sticker or something. Mm -hmm. um, for a six by six <coughs> inch, I mean, that's pretty small. But once again, we can expand our printers readily mm -hmm. to larger sizes. So you can make really usable uh, sizes. Now, there is a, actually this file is not updated. There's what is missing from this to make a plotter work really robustly. Um, if you, what we just talked about just now, what's missing there? We've got a point of attachment to the carriage. We've got the pen attachment. Uh, the spring is actually the fact that there's these flat pieces and actually can, the way it's attached, they can, it can wobble up and down if you go too far down. We need the probe, so this thing is actually missing the probe okay. attachment point, which is, it's in the file, this, is, this picture is not updated. So, um, for example, in the part library here, we'd want to say, we'd want to add, uh, actually I did add it right, I think I added it right, yeah, 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 so here you see if you look at that oh. picture, it's a modified version of that clip with a place to put in your, uh, uh -huh. just did that just like that, bam, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, so that works and you put your probe in there so that means from the wire bundle uh, extract unfortunately we don't have more than one probe so uh, yeah you gotta uh, take out the probe from your wire bundle and use it in here so it's not turnkey probably what we want to have is like if you're using this practically probably want to have a separate probe uh, now the probes cost if you get them from China they're, they're like two dollars and fifty cents for the so you have to take off sensor the entire probe. extruding assembly and remove, remove it that. Down. You have to disconnect anything really. You got to disconnect it. Just disconnect physically the head. Just put it off to the side. And then all you're doing is riding the pen attachment. But you have to take out your probe. Uh, actually, we have a couple of extra. We have one extra probe. So, but you kind of have to. Uh, we can. We have two extra probes actually. So, I guess yeah. you can. Uh, we can 
if you don't want to rip out your bundle of the, uh, we can scary. give it to you. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, if you can, like, but we need to put the side. Like, if you're gonna, you might as well just um, create a new carriage or a new uh, sort of extruder head assembly that handles holding this. You're not you're adding much weight. We're gonna add a couple of grams oh, yeah. of extra plastic and okay. then stick a pen to it. Well, that sounds like maybe that's uh, that's a way to go. So maybe you want to design that and see if uh, you can take the files and we have the extruder file. Maybe just yeah. add the <laughs> add a side. Oh yeah, like just put a, like an attachment point and add the basically oh, the, the pen thing. attachment. Oh. Thing. You have to have a little bit of spring in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but actually, like because we have the height sensing, the spring may not be super necessary. I mean, um, but we know that the spring definitely helps. It makes it more robust, so you don't break your you know, pencil tip right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, there's things like that that <laughs> have you imagine your universal head where you got oh, it's just printing now, or now we're just putting a pen on it and it's mm -hmm. actually plotting. So yeah, yeah, that, I could see that being effective. Uh, only only issue is that it's you know the, the printer head is quite heavy but I mean we're doing it anyway already so adding a little bit of weight for the, <coughs> the pen does not matter much there yeah. yeah yeah but I would suggest yeah whichever you like I mean I I'll I'll go ahead and uh, on we have three printers here I'll, I'll go ahead I'll, I'll probably just print it. I just want to get to the tool chains where we're generating G code by hand or or generating out of uh, Inkscape so maybe we print this, we get this, get where we're going. After launch, we probably uh, run it, do the G code generation and plotting. Uh, so, the assignment for everybody on the team here would be um, the preparation on a plotter. The plotter page should already have. Okay, this actually, you got to search on my log. I forget where I put it, but I know that on my log, I have um, G code generation in. Um, Inkscape. So I'm going to go Control F on March and Log, and I'm going to say Inkscape using Inkscape to generate G code. So there's that page. Read that, people. So let me put that link into the Monday, January 27th schedule. So go to the article. So we call that article. Article slash wiki page. A page that's after the wiki.opensourceecology.org slash wiki. That's why I mean the page name is after the slash. So the page name is using Inkscape to generate G-code. So you have instructions of how to do that within, within Inkscape. What you will need to do there, you need to download an extension uh, called... Yeah, there's an extension. Let's see. There's a, and a G code. It's a called G code plot. So there's a video online. Uh, here's a post on how to install it. So please install that. Um, actually, on the Linux, we don't have that pre installed since this is a new thing since 2016. We just started the pen plotter. Uh, so you have to go on your computer off, not on OS Linux. Just probably download and generate. Um, you can generate the G codes for printing just on your regular computer. So boot back into your regular computer. I installed it on not the live version, but uh, so. I mean, what what is it? Can it be installed on the <coughs> OSD Linux? Like if I have that running natively as a yeah, if you have that native, okay. that's fine. You can install it if you're using live. Yeah. You can't install okay. on that. Right, so right, you, right. you could just do an apt-get update on Inkscape and then install it under there. Because that, if you have Internet access, that'll, that'll update the Inkscape. Within package. Live? Yeah. Oh, you can do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. you, you got to do the SU to root in order to do the package. Yeah, yeah. that's how you like update driver yeah. to mm -hmm. test and make sure that when, when, the, when you do install it natively uh, outside of live mode, that you have all the right drivers and you know everything works. Right. Unfortunately, you'd have to do that every time you, you turn right. off the computer yes, for the live version. But 
Yeah, so we want to, I mean... But if you make a note of it, I mean, you can script that out, so all the, thi all the different things you have to update. Oh, you can, yeah, you can do yeah. a little... That's you can update. So, like, for this, I have to... Have You're to saying, like... The driver for the, for the keyboard, for the keyboard to work. Right. And that will have to do it every time when I'm running it off yeah. of this. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But so you're of what all those drivers are yeah, that you're requesting updates for, you just literally, uh, you know, update mm -hmm. this driver, that, 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 all these different things. And it will so just, just the shell script command yeah. line, yeah. which is a text file <coughs> that you download from the wiki. Oh, yeah. That's that but it, at some point that will get unmanageable though. Right, um, yeah. So you, you need to just update. So that's a fix, and then we're getting the next version. We didn't have any, enough time to get it out for this camp. We'll probably have it for next camp. Um, but yeah. So download the, the G-code plot so you're ready to do that. And Chris, if you want to, you know, divvy up, and if you guys want to work on the the CNC drill part, that'll be a way to get both of these things done. That was the point of collaboration. We can get multiple things done because probably, you know, playing yeah. around and you know, day is pretty short. We probably won't have time to do both, uh, like in house, like ourselves. Yeah. But we can definitely do it since this is only the beginning. we and we've got all the stuff documented for uh, people to do that afterwards as well. So we have the tool chains. That sound good? Any questions? Yeah, so that's what we're trying to do with the free cat. Um, well, the, it's been, I'm uh, going to be uh, yeah, printing out uh, the pen holder and, and uh, downloading this uh, extension too to, uh, to try and get that working on, on our D3D. But um, for generating the, um, the G code for the, the, uh, the CNC um, uh, mill, uh, I know that will be a, a different tool chain. I'm not. I'm not How about this? Do a, do a simple one mm -hmm. where you do it. Just do, generate. Do it as an exercise to generate G code manually. So say you know, move over, poke down, raise uh, up. Uh, just do it by hand. You know, and get a you know right. get like a linear pattern of holes. That'll be success. I mean, we have a yeah. you know, automatically controlled thing that you actually generate the G code like that. I think that's that's plenty of success for now. We can build upon that yeah. later. Yeah. Right. Does that sound you you know the basic G G code commands, right? I mean just simple things and uh, yeah, yeah, and how to yeah. send send uh, uh, direct commands to it, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. In a file you um, can open up a text mm -hmm. file, call it save it as dot G code, and then you put in whatever your X zero F fifteen hundred on line one, line two is whatever X Zero, huh. what, whatever the G code is, um, so do it as like a simple, you know, like a five line, or just just do some basic things, and then show it's like, oh wow, we're actually getting it to do what we want it want it to do. Because a lot of the stuff will be around like, yeah. okay, where's yeah. the origin? How does this whole tool chain work? Just getting used to it. So once you can do like one or two holes, then you can go nuts and and figure out all kinds of complex patterns, or ge just generate it automatically using. Like flat cam, for example. Uh, there's different ways to generate G code. There's flat cam. There's the Inkscape G code extension. There's FreeCAD path module. So we won't have time to go over all of that, but we should be aware that those things exist. And you can Google that. And maybe like one of us, I don't know, like, I don't know, if Jeremy, uh, you seem to be pretty good on code. Maybe like write write something on get us an instructional on the best you know the most refined tool chain to get the g code out using software you know select one and and uh help us do that or something mm. yeah so let you know let's divide divvy up the tax so definitely let's print out the the pen get some plots going um on the on the G code plot page, I think there's a sample file there, a link to a sample fire file uh, that you can get. Um, or if it's not there, I'm gonna I'll put it up there. But we we can do like a, probably what we want to do is start with a sample file that we just download and, and see how it works, and then we can generate you know go into Inkscape and just start drawing things and, and exporting that way. So there's yeah yeah things like that um, so should we check in after lunch today or
Oh, that sounds good. I'm not sure when um, Shung's going to get here. Um, and for us to get started, it might be another hour or so. The um, airport's the other side of town. But um, okay. Yeah. What time? Were you, what time are you thinking? Yeah. Let's you know. Let's maybe check in at. Okay. If you're a little. Uh, my, um, I don't know. Check in at three. All right. Yeah. That sounds good. All right, there's a small chance I might not be able to make that window. I have a, I have a commitment. I need to keep this late afternoon. So okay. if I can make it, I will be here. Okay. okay. So one, three, four, <clears throat> for the U.S. team. Yes. Okay. Right. Wait, four o'clock my time, right? Yes. Four o'clock your yes. time. Three hours. Good. <laughs> one on Pacific. Mm. Okay. okay. That's good. Right. Sounds great. Okay. And keep uploading to, you know, use the J page, the January 2020 Open Source Microfactory Steam Camp page, and use your logs so that the, all those red red logs there turn green there, and turn blue there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, the, guys. The uh, calibration procedure. Yeah. Go ahead. Got moved yeah. into, um, I put it in the instructions for the D3D, D3D build. I made another page. Oh, so the link for that is in my log. Aha. Uh -huh. Awesome. Cool. So uh, let's see. Jeremy Log first printable. So let's see if I click on your Jeremy Log, do I get there? Is it? Oh yeah, that's good. Uh huh. Yep. So we can refer Michelle if they need help to that. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Yep. Awesome. So yeah, we'll 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 talk to you guys um, in the afternoon. All right, sounds good. Sounds good, good. guys. Take care. Bye-bye.